Remote play. This is a term that the Vita community could hate you for or love you for. It really depends. Some Vita fans love remote play and some hate it. But let's look at the other side of the coin. There are a lot of benefits to using remote play, which I will now talk to you about. Now that I have a PS4, here is my official review of the PS4 Link app, or a review of remote play. I admit this is a little awkward at first, because I've never really done a video review on a PS Vita app as opposed to a game. But the first thing we need to talk about here is functionality. What does the PS4 Link app do? When you open up the app, you have two main options on the screen, which are Remote Play and Second Screen. Remote Play is the main feature, and it basically streams your PS4 video and audio to the PS Vita system or PlayStation TV system. This requires both systems to be on the internet, and you're essentially streaming the PS4 to the Vita to be able to browse the store, play games, talk to people on PSN, anything you can do on the PS4, pretty much you can do on the Vita with Remote Play. The other feature is called Second Screen. Second Screen is compatible for some games that have capabilities for it. Basically, you can use the Vita as a second screen if you're not the person playing the game or if you just want a second screen uh, down next to you as you play your PS4. Second Screen can do certain features, like some games could have it be a map or they could have it be a mirror in a driving game. But it also has keyboard functionality. Since the PS4 doesn't really have a lot of touch-friendly keyboard controls, the PS Vita can accommodate for this, so whenever you have to do text input, you can just switch to your second screen on the Vita and type in with the touch screen. So that's about it for what it does. So let's talk about the interface now. The initial window, as I said before, has two options on the screen, one for remote play, one for second screen. There's also an icon in the bottom right corner of the screen for settings. Settings allow you to go in and adjust the video quality. On the PS Vita, you can set video quality resolution to 540p or 360, but on the PlayStation TV, we default at 720p, so we can only set it to 720 or 540. There is also a frame rate option, so you can put it on standard for a 30 frames per second remote play, or you can set it on high if your internet is fast enough for 60 frames per second. Now we go on to actual remote play. The first thing I'll note here is that the PlayStation TV does not have the second screen option. You can only connect to remote play and it automatically does that because the PlayStation TV version of the application just has a next button when you first load it. Now when you're actually doing the remote play streaming, as you can see here, the actual interface is mostly when you hit the home button. When you hit the home button you get a little menu here. You can go to the live area screen which basically cancels the connection to the PS4 and goes back to the Vita app. You can hit the PS4 system button, which is basically the equivalent of hitting the home button on the PS4. When you're in the middle of a game, there's also a button icon on this bottom bar that allows you to open up and look at the remote play schematics and controls when you're on the Vita. This is not present when you're streaming to the PlayStation TV like in this video review, mostly because the PlayStation TV has all the buttons it needs, the Vita does not. Now, when you're in second screen mode, there are controls set up the same way on a bottom bar and a sidebar. The center will allow you to basically move around the screen, and on the bottom you have bar with options for moving through menus, and on the right sidebar you have icons to enable keyboard controls, toggling the second screen function, as well as disconnecting from the PS4. Now we're going to talk about performance. This is what everyone complains about. If I had a nickel for every time I saw someone on Twitter talking about how terrible the PlayStation TV is because of unplayable streaming, I would be a rich man. So, what it boils down to are a few things. First thing, let's talk about internet connection. My internet connection at home is about 15 to 17 megabits per second down and 1 to 2 megabits per second up. I would not suggest you try remote play on this. I would say the bare minimum is what I have if you're remote playing from the same room. If you want to set up a PlayStation TV or Vita remote play in your bedroom, which is not where the PS4 is, I would suggest at least getting 30 megabits down and at least, I'd say, 3, 4, or even 5 megabits per second up. Now let's talk about the actual streaming quality. 
when you're actually streaming, things are a little bit different between the two systems. As I said before, the Vita can be set to 360p or 540, whereas the PSTV has 540 and 720. If you don't have very fast internet, this can be very important. The default setting on the PSTV is 720, so if you don't have really good high-speed internet, I would suggest that you immediately go into settings and set that down to 540 on the PlayStation TV. As far as the actual streaming quality, the Vita runs fairly smooth pretty much every time I try to link to the app as long as I'm in the same room. I have found some situations where I'm, I have a little bit of input lag, but most time it's maybe half a second lag between the button input and the command going through. It's nothing unplayable, but it's definitely noticeable, kind of like the lag that you can sometimes get when you're streaming PS3 games to the Vita with PlayStation Now. On the PlayStation TV, it's a different story. Once I started and tested the PlayStation TV's remote play capabilities, I started to understand why people complain about it so much. For some reason, the PlayStation TV has a lot more lag and latency issues than the Vita does. We're not talking about dropping to 10 or less frames per second during a stream, but on my internet, as I said before, 15 down, 2 up, it was noticeably worse than the PS Vita streaming quality. A lot of times the pixels broke as I was running around a mission in raid mode in Resident Evil Revelations 2, and sometimes the audio would get really blurry and kind of slow down with the stream just struggling to keep up with the PS4. That's something you should definitely be aware of. A lot of people buy a PlayStation TV to use remote play, so if you do, just make sure you have internet fast enough for this, and you set that resolution down to 540. PS4 Link is a very intuitive design from Sony to link its two systems, and a lot of people think it was a big inspiration for the rumors around the Nintendo NX. The only downer about remote play is that the PlayStation TV's PS4 Link app runs a lot more sluggish than it does on the PS Vita, which doesn't really make sense given that they both run the same operating system. Regardless of this, PS4 Link is a very useful feature if you'd like to see Fallout 4 or other PS4 games on the tiny screen in the bedroom. Reviews to Go rates the PS4 Link app a 9 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to my site at www.reviews2go.com.